All right. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us today for our BitFire webinar and how it can simplify your Ethernet performance testing. My name is Kay. I'm the Operations Manager here at the IOL for our Ethernet and Storage Technologies. I'll be joined later by Nick Kahn and Hunter Wells to give some brief demos of our BitFire test tool. We will have a question and answer session at the end of this webinar. So if you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the questions window at any time. We'll get to as many as we can and any that I don't get to, I'll follow up with you after the webinar. Brief overview of our agenda for the day. I'll start with who is the IOL? What is a BitFire and how does it work? Go over a couple of different use cases, some of the user benefits, show off a couple of demo videos of our tool, and then show off a few other things that are on our development roadmap for the BitFire platform. So the UNH Interoperability Lab was founded in 1988. We are located on the main UNH campus in beautiful Durham, New Hampshire. We're about five hours north of New York City. And then the UNH IOL is a nonprofit, neutral, third-party lab dedicated to testing data communications and networking technologies through industry collaboration. So the IOL has been involved in the Ethernet industry since the late 1980s, basically since our inception. We've been a longtime participant in the IEEE SA, actively participating in 802.1 and 802.3 working groups. We've currently built a test bed of more than a thousand switches, end stations, and test channels from various manufacturers from around the world. And we host more than a hundred test plans covering speeds from 10 megabit to 400 gigabits per second. In addition to our Ethernet technologies, we also have more than 20 other technologies that we support here at the IOL, ranging from IPv6 to NVMe and beyond. In many of these areas, we've also custom developed test tools that we use for our own testing, some of which we also make available to our customers. One of those tools is Bitfire, and that's the one that we're going to talk about more today. So Bitfire is one of the primary tools that we use in our Ethernet testing groups. Um, Bitfire has been around in various iterations since the early 2000s. Since then, it's kind of taken over our performance testing. And more recently, we've worked to consolidate all of those tools and revisions into one clean tool that we can make available to our customers. So our current iteration of Bitfire supports 10, 100, and 1,000 base T in the RJ45 optical 1G for the SFP port, and then 100 base T1 for our automotive and single pair Ethernet buys. Below you can see the list of our currently available test packages. Um, these will be available to license individually and allow for the semi-automated collection and analysis of the data streams for those individual test plans. Here's a picture of our Bitfire. Um, so our Bitfire is a Xilinx FPGA that we encase in our own custom designed case. Um, and then we build our custom firmware and software on top, allowing us to control the board uh, to perform our testing. So here is the main Bitfire application. Um, Bitfire is designed to run on Windows 10. And the main interface allows us to configure the Bitfire and set up that initial link with the device that we want to test. From this interface, we're also able to view the, the captured data from the test cases. Um, so we're able to see both the transmitted and the received data in a variety of different formats. And then you're also able to open that data later in a Wireshark tool. In addition to the main application view, we also have a built-in res parser for some of our test plans. So this will allow the Bitfire to see the test runs that are being performed, and then assign pass-fail results based on our UNH IOL test plans. The results parser can also mark the frames that are causing either the failing results or that are causing a result outside of our pass-fail criteria, so that the user knows where to look in order to interpret those results. So now that we know a little bit about Bitfire, we're going to kind of go over a few use cases where it might be useful to our customers. Um, these are, of course, not all of the use cases, but just a few to highlight. So, of course, the primary one and the one that we use it for a lot is the conformance validation. So many times people are looking to 
prove that their devices are conforming to a relevant standard. So with the BitFire, you're able to have access to the, that semi-automation of our industry-recognized testing in your own lab. You're able to easily run this testing on a new device. And since you're using the same platform, the same scripts across multiple test runs, you're able to compare the results easily between multiple devices or multiple iterations of the same device. One more specific example might be our Open Alliance TC1 testing or the 100 base T1 PCS and Phi control test plans. So we're able to use BitFire to create and establish that link with the device and then tr transmit to it our customized test sequences. From there, um, we have a MATLAB add-on that's able to download the oscilloscope captures and then descramble and decode the transmissions to determine that bit level behavior. In addition to your basic conformance testing, you're also able to do regression testing. So many manufacturers will release new firmware and new drivers um, for hardware that's already established in the industry. With BitFire, you're able to easily retest a piece of hardware that was previously tested with an older firmware um, in order to make sure that that new firmware hasn't, hasn't put in any new issues or new problems into the device. You're also able to use the BitFire to prove that previous issues have now been resolved with a new iteration of your firmware and drivers. In addition to our defined testing, you're also able to do custom testing using the platform. So the test station interface will allow you to create custom test streams so that you're able to create testing for a non-standard deployment scenario. Um, perhaps a customer is defining something outside of your normal deployment, um, as well as test the device in a variety of unusual scenarios, corner cases, um, and to replicate any issues that your customers may have found in the field. And then you're also able to go beyond what your standards body might have defined for testing. In addition to those use cases, there are some other additional benefits. Um, so why might you use BitFire? So BitFire has access to those standardized test scripts that I mentioned. You're able to quickly do that regression testing. And then if you're looking for the custom testing, it's an easy to understand scripting language. Um, you don't need any hardcore programming knowledge to be able to use the BitFire and to develop those tests. In addition, you've got a platform that was built off of 30 plus years of experience from the UNH IOL. Um, so we have the ability not only to build the platform that you can use, but also to answer any questions, interpretations of the standards, um, and be able to help with anything like that as you run your testing. If your company is also interested in getting access to our UNH IOL reports, um, once you've completed your conformance testing, um, BitFire can be really helpful to have in your own lab to help with the pre-testing the pre and the debugging time. So you're able to perform testing on the same platform we use, using the same scripts that we use. So you're able to pre-test your device before you send it to us, um, increasing your confidence that it's going to work properly once we have it. And then if we do have any ish, issues while we're testing it, you're able to replicate those issues in your own lab, figure out a fix for them, test that fix, and then send us the correction um, to our team so we can complete the testing in a more timely manner. From here, we're gonna move into a couple of demos from our students. Um, our first one will be a demo by Nick Khan showing off the overall features of BitFire. Hello, my name is Nick Kahn. I'm a computer science student at UNH and a lead software developer at the IOL. Today, I will be showing you how to use BitFire. Once BitFire is loaded up, you should see this menu. You can access the test setup, automated test setup and test plans tabs in the top left hand corner. In the test setup tab, we have the ability to change the destination and source MAC addresses as well as the source and destination IP addresses. And you can even change the minimum IPG. You can also change the speed and duplex as well as the media type and pause configuration of the board. 
And then if you go in the bottom le left hand corner, you can see the test status of the automated testing that is being run. Now, in the automated test setup tab, it allows you to set up and run automated testing. And in the test plans tab, you can see both tests, summaries of the tests, and run info on whether or not the tests have passed or failed. And then in order to select the speed, media, and duplex, you will see the buttons right here. Now, in this case, let's say we want to go to 10, click 10, and then hit apply speed, duplex, and media configuration. You can also select the type of pause you want to support. Now, after you've applied the speed configuration, you'll notice that when you go to test plans, only the supported speeds are open. In order to add test plans, go to manage available test plans, and then you will see a list right here if you've already added them, but if you haven't, click add test plan and then go to the folder that the test plan lies in and then select the speed and media that you want it to support. So if I wanted to add a gig test plan that supported fiber, I would do this as such. And then you'd hit OK. I have already added all the test plans, so I do not need to add any more. Now, once you've added the test plans, go to Add Test Plan and select all the test plans that you wish to show in the Available Test Plans queue. Now, if I want to run a test plan, I will select it and then go to the Run Only interface. And I want to run, let's say, Part A. I will arm Bitfire by hitting Capture, which preps Bitfire so that when it receives anything, it will be able to capture it. So when I hit Upload, it will upload the currently selected test. And then I hit Transmit to transmit that test, and then Download to view the results of the capture. In this case, you can see we have Detail Frame, and then let's say we want to go to Raw MII, you'll see that they are color-coded code groups, which makes it easy to differentiate between them. That was an example of copper in the test station interface. Now I'm going to show you how to use fiber in the run-only interface. Once you get to test setup, select fiber, one gig, and hit apply speed duplex and media configuration. Then go to the supported test plan, select the test that you wish to run, in this case, part B of 4.1.1. Go to the run only interface, select the current test suite, upload it, prep the board for capture, and then transmit the currently selected test, and then download to download the capture. And then here you can see the detailed frame view which shows us what we've received back and sent out. And then here you can see the 8B, 10B encoding, which is color coded so that you can easily tell the different code groups apart. And then once you come back to here, you can see a summary of this tests that were run. And if you look, you can see the yellow, or sorry, orange. If you look here, you can see the orange colored packet is the one that caused the test to fail. And that is all. My name is Nick Khan. Thank you for watching the Bitfire webinar. All right, thanks to Nick for that demo of our overall Bitfire features. From here, we're gonna to move to a demo from Hunter Wells, focusing on our more automotive or single pair ethernet features. Hi, my name is Hunter. I'm a second year majoring in computer engineering at the University of New Hampshire and an automotive ethernet test technician here at the UNH Interoperability Laboratory. I use the Automotive Ethernet Bitfire platform to run Clause 96, Pi Control, PCS, and TC10 conformance testing, and I am going to give a brief overview of the software. 
The automotive Ethernet Bitfire uses Xilinx FPGAs and custom-built hardware to generate arbitrary bit patterns. Further, it enables users to define their own test scripts in addition to the UNH IOL generated test plans included with the system. When the Automotive Ethernet Bitfire software is launched, you will be presented with our single and intuitive interface page. At the center of the page, the current test script is displayed. The training buffer shows the training sequence that will be used to establish a link with the DUT. To load a script, you must first select the script's directory and then use the drop-down menu to select a script. The current script will be displayed below the training buffer. Scripts are composed of two parts, the buffer control and the buffers. The buffer control defines how and in what order the buffers will be run. Buffers can be run once, looped a set number of times, or looped until an external trigger is received. It is often necessary in testing to hold a transmission pattern until the device responds before moving on. This external trigger option allows you to do just that. In a common example, you could write a script that instructs the bitfire to transmit with sendi and local receiver status not okay until the slave device starts transmitting, and then begin transmitting with local receiver status OK as soon as the slave's transmissions are detected. This allows you to quickly and easily measure the time it takes for the device to establish a link without any of the guesswork. Within the buffers, you can specify the transmission mode, local receiver status, and number of code groups. You can optionally instruct the bitfire to set one of two triggers high for the duration of the instruction. More keyword modifiers allow you to set the TX enable signal, specify exact ternary pairs, encode the data, or even send TC10 signaling like LPS or wake request signaling. When you are finished running your script or wish to run a script that you just loaded, you can click the parse upload transmit button to begin the test. Or if you only need to establish a link, click the transmit training buffer button. Around the edges of the interface page lie buttons that allow you to choose how the bitfire is configured, choose whether the bitfire is master or slave, put it into a test mode, reverse polarity, swap ternary pairs, or configure how the trigger pins will be used. The bitfire also supports many clock inputs and outputs. Once the script has been run, you can open up the capture window for interpreting the results. Inside the capture window, you can select the oscilloscope IP address the scope channels, role setting, and decode options. The packet option can be used to decode packets from the transmissions and write them to a text file. The flip ordering option allows you to decode transmissions that have swapped ternary pairs. And the TC10 option allows you to decode TC10 signaling. Filter will display how the signaling was parsed into the three levels of PAM3. In order to parse the signaling into the three levels, you will need a filter file for both the bitfire and the device. The filter file for the bitfire will be provided, and the filter file for the device can be created by placing the dot into test mode 4 and using the train equalizer button. Once both filter files are selected, you can start the MATLAB decoder by clicking Get Traces. When the decoder is finished, it will display a figure with two graphs, one for each channel. The graphs will show the decodable signals and the transmission modes over time, and even highlight things like packets and low power signaling. Additional scope channels can be plotted over the capture, and time measurements can be taken from data points placed on the figure. Automotive Ethernet Bitfire provides a flexible and powerful way to test automotive devices. It comes with scripts for Clause 96 FI control, PCS, and TC10 testing, but you can also create, save, and load your own test scripts. The Automotive Ethernet Bitfire will help you easily test your automotive devices. Thank you very much for watching this quick introduction to Automotive Ethernet Bitfire, and happy testing! All right, thanks to Hunter for that demo on our automotive Ethernet specific features. From here, now that you've seen a little bit of what our Bitfire can do currently, now I'll show off kind of the features that we're looking to add in the next iterations. So we're, perf we're going to start with increasing our automotive and single pair Ethernet support. So adding support for 1000 base T1, 10 base T1L, and 10 base T1S buys, as well as the related test plans and TC10, or that sleep-wake functions, and your Clause 98 auto negotiation. 
We'll also be adding support for SFP+, so that'll enable tng based R testing and the related test plans associated there, such as our Clause 73 auto negotiation. We'll also be enhancing our base T support, adding in 2.5, 5, and 10G base T, and then importing our current base C auto negotiation test tool into Bitfire so you'll, able, you'll be able to run all of those test plans as well on a single platform. Once we finish the low speed technologies, then we'll be ramping up the speeds and heading up to the 10G and 25G serial FIs. This will then enable all the related test plans in there, your auto negotiation, your PCSs, as well as your Mac and flow testing. And then in addition to those kind of speed and test plan specific technologies, we're gonna be adding in some additional features um, like the ability to treat the Bitfire as a NIC with side stream operation, um, instead of having to have it be a standalone unit um, in your setup, be able to add support for TSN, implement a remote API for automation and to better integrate our Bitfire into your testing environment, and then adding a results database and a web-based results viewer. So from there, that's everything we had about our Bitfire. Thank you for joining us for now. Uh, we're gonna move into some questions from the audience. And again, if I don't get all of the questions, um, we'll be able to follow up with you after the fact and check, um, check in with those afterwards. The first question we have here is, does the Bitfire only support one link partner uh, or can it be used in a 10 meg multi-drop automotive ethernet network? So at the moment, it does only support that one link partner, um, but we also don't support the multi-drop technology yet. Um, once we add in the multi-drop functionality, then we'll be able to support uh, more than one in that type of network. From there, um, oh, here's another good one. So does the IOL sell, lease, or loan the Bitfire test tool? Um, so our Bitfire test tool is available with an annual license fee. Um, those fees will vary per test plan. Um, and then from there, you're able to use the test, use the test tool in your own facility for that year. Um, and then um, you're able to pick and choose which ones you want each year as you go on. And then there's a couple of different options for support options to where you're able to reference the Iowa staff as a place, um, as a place to help you interpret results define custom test tool, um, custom test scripts, um, and things like that. So yep, it will be available for lease um, to our customers. So next one here, are we able to record logs using the Bitfire? Um, what format will they be recorded in? And then can you run the log again? So yes, right now the Bitfire does record its results um, into a file. That file um, can be reloaded after the fact so that you can um, view it again, run it through the res parser and see um, where the results may have caused issues. And then uh, I am good question on what format they are in. I will have to double check on that one and get back to you. Um, I do know that the logs are readable by Wireshark. Um, so I'll check in with that after the fact. And then so have one about, is there a, a paper test or kind of demo version available to show, um, show your peers? Uh, we don't have this option available right now. Um, as you notice in our slides, Bitfire does require a hardware purchase. Um, but if somebody does want to show it off in a more um, kind of more specific format, we can certainly set up a company specific demo. Um, or another webinar to kind of go over any specific questions that you may have. Um, and then in addition, this webinar was recorded and it will be available tomorrow. So you're able to show that off um, as well to your coworkers and then we can move forward from there. And I think we've got one additional one. Uh, so what other test equipment does this type of testing require? That's gonna vary depending on the individual test plan that you're looking for. For several of our test plans, um, such as our Mac and flow control testing, 
you can run that with just the BitFire. Um, but for things like some of the automotive and the single pair ethernet testing that does require an oscilloscope, um, and we can make those requirements available um, if you're interested in that type of testing. All right, I think I've got time for one or two more. If you have any others, so we'll go about another minute. So I know I've mentioned um, that the tools available to our customers. Um, customers can really be anybody. It's not necessarily a member of the IOL. Um, so as I mentioned, actually in response to a question a few questions ago, uh, <laughs> you're able to license the individual test plans, but then there's also the support feature. So we have a couple of different ways you can get that support. You can either be a member of the IOL, so that'll get you that support included in your membership, um, or there's an additional support uh, member, it, it, membership individually. So where you're able to just get support from us without the additional cost of the testing and all of that. Um, so you don't need to be a member of the IOL. The membership will include a support fee or includes your support without an extra fee, um, but it's certainly not required that you be one of our members. All right, unless there's any last minute questions, um, thank you guys for coming. As I mentioned, my name is Kay Doobie. If you have any other questions, please feel free to contact me. Uh, my email will be here in the webinar, um, or I'm fairly easy to find on our website. And then, um, like I said, we have several different options for our, our test packages, and we're able to customize which test packages you want, so we can customize a bit fire for your needs. All of our information can be found on our website under the products and solutions tab. And then other than that, thank you guys for joining us for this webinar. Um, hope to hear from you soon. Thank you.